Hello, in this video I'm going to show how to set up and program an ST microcontroller in order to interface an incremental encoder and read the data from such device. I will use STQubeID to program the microcontroller and the CubeMX built-in configuration tool to configure it. In terms of hardware, I will use a Nucleo F767ZI, which enables prototyping with Cortex-M7 based MCU, the F7671. The board already provides a built-in programmer debugger. As a side note, ANSTI Nucleo prototyping boards are physically split into two parts. The first one contains the circuitry to program debug, and the second one contains the MCU plus some passive component to be able to start working. One thing that I like about these boards is that the programmer debugger section is not only connected and is used to manage the board MCU, but via header and jumper can be used also to program external MCU. That might be very interesting, for instance, to finalize the work when you move to your custom PCB without the need to buy another equipment to program the MCU. Let's move to this specific example. Here I have connected the board to a rotary incremental encoder and to four LEDs. The four LEDs are powered via PWM to dim the light where the dimmer is in fact the rotary encoder. Using the switch button of the rotary encoder will allow me to move from one LED to the other. The rotary encoder has five pins. Two are power plus and ground, two are the output terminals A and B for the encoder itself, and finally one is the output line for the switch button. In order to read the quadrature encoding signal coming from the rotary encoder, I will use a timer counter of the F7 MCU. But why use a timer counter to read a rotary encoder? It is possible in fact just connect the output of the rotary encoder to two GPIO lines in input mode and simply interpret the encoded data inside the main loop. However, in my experience, this is not so straightforward the task. Actually, to have a stable and reliable reading and get rid of the bouncing phenomenon, it's a bit of a challenge, especially the first time you do it. Also, correctly interpret the direction of the rotation is not that simple. That's why manufacturer of MCU makes sometimes available dedicated device or extends functionality of existing ones to simplify such tasks. In the case of ST, the device used is a timer counter. The concept is that normally a timer counter counts from zero to a certain number on the basis of an internal source set clock. In encoder mode, the source clock of the timer is in fact the signal coming from the A B leads of the rotary encoder. On top of this, the device also returns the direction value in one specific bit of a given register, which surely helps. Let's start checking the MCU configuration inside the CubeMX tool. I have configured timer 4, and as you can see, among the configuration mode available, there is one named encoder mode. Once set, you can find on the lower part of the configurator the counter period parameter which fix the maximum value of the timer count where I have set 200. This is a value that works better for me in order to have a good LED dimming granularity and at the same time a satisfying speed in dimming. Then you have to enable the auto reload preload and to declare that the encoding functionality will work on two lines in input. Finally, I set for the two lines the input filter value, usually between 10 and 50. This filter helps in preventing the bouncing issue. Another element in the mix that helps in having a reliable reading avoiding bouncing is internal MCU pull-up resistor to be set for the two input lines. To do this, you have to go to System Core, GPIO, Section Team, where you can see that the tool has already set the two lines PD12 and PD13 the correct alternate function to work with timer in encoder mode. Here you want internal pull-up enabled. Then we move to the main code block where I simply start the timer via HAL function. Here is the HTM4 started for all channels. Inside the infinite loop, I read the value of the count directly inside the CNT register that is where the count is incremented or decremented on the basis of the rotary encoder signal. As you can see, I divide by four to have a workable value. This is because in the quadrature encoding, you have two signal A, B, as said, connected to two sets of switches. And moving the shaft of the rotary encoder, you open and close co contacts in different points in time. 
So in fact, you have A line switched on, and this will be the first transition in value from zero to VCC. Then you have B go line goes on, and then here you have the second transition. A line goes off, and there you have the third one, and finally B line goes off, and then you have the fourth transition. As you can see, in total four transitions, which explain the division above. Then I put a couple of if-else in order to block the minimum and maximum value, as a matter of a fact, impeding the rollover of the timer count. And finally, I execute the function setPWM light encoder, which effectively dim the light of the LED with PWM using the timer counter value as basis. I also set inside an enumeration called direction the value of the DIR bit of the CR1 register. The DIR bit is the fourth bit of the register and it changes when the direction changes. We can easily see the effect in the back mode using the live expression feature of the Cube IDE. As already said, what I like of this implementation is that it works very reliably right out of the box. That's all and thanks for your attention. See you.